let's look at a question here where we're asked to create a perpetual inventory record and calculate cost of goods sold ending inventory and gross profit for the month under LIFO. This is important. LIFO stands for last in first out. So regardless of how the material actually flows, we assume for accounting purposes that the last items purchased are going to be the first ones to go out the door. So first thing we need to do is go ahead and fill in our beginning balance here. So our beginning balance we had on hand, if we scroll up to the top on May 1st, 85 units at $13 with a total of 1,105. Okay, great. Now we purchase 75 units. It doesn't matter what method we use, FIFO, LIFO, weighted average, anytime we make a purchase, we're gonna enter the information under the purchases column. And then we're gonna add that to the inventory that we had on hand before we made that purchase. So I'm just gonna copy straight down what I had before. And now I will add the 75 at 12 and 900. Okay, now we make a purchase on May 3rd. So I'm gonna do the same thing I just did. I'm gonna add 60 that had a cost. This time the cost is going up, it's $14 a unit. So my total cost for buying 60 is 840. So I'm gonna carry down the 85 that were in my, uh, that was my beginning balance. I'm gonna add the purchase that I made on May 2nd which was 75 units that had a cost of 12 for a total cost of 900. And then I will add the May 3rd purchase, which was 60 units with a cost of 14. And you may think this gets a little tedious and it does, but it's really important so that when we go to sell, which is the next step here on May 10th, we sell 130 units. So <clears throat> it's very helpful, <coughs> excuse me, to know exactly what I have in inventory at any given time. So when it's time to sell, I know how to, how to, um, what I have available and at what point it was purchased. So under LIFO, last in, first out, the last items in was this purchase of 60 items with a unit cost of 14. So under LIFO, I assume those are the first ones to go out the door. Whether or not they are, I don't know and I don't care. I'm gonna make that assumption. But I sell 130 units. So that's only 60. I need 70 more to make 130. And those 70 will have to come out of my next group of purchases that I made on May 2nd at $12 a piece. So 70 times 12 happens to also be $840. And what that will leave me in ending inventory, there are five units with a cost of 12, which is 60. And then, whoops. I think I put those in the wrong spot. I'll put that 85 back in there at 13 since those were on the top 1105 and then I will put that five which again I had 75 and I sold 70 that leaves me five and those had a cost of 12 or $60. So we'll keep track as we keep going. Now on the 15th I purchased 30 more with the cost of $18 a piece. Ooh, it's getting expensive. And I'll have to carry down. What did I have already on hand? 85 at 13. And then I had the 5, 12. And now I'm going to add this May 15th group. 30 units at a cost of $18 a piece. 540. Now just to point out the sales price here. That's the revenue. That's what the customer pays. Cost is what we're worried about here. On the 17th then, I sell 40 units. Okay, LIFO. That means the last one's in, where's this purchase, made on May 15th, and I'm selling 40 units. Now I only bought 30 on that round, so I'm gonna have to dig a little deeper into my inventory bucket. And I had five at 12. Well shoot, that only gets me to 35, and I sold 40. So that means I need uh, to assume that I sold five of the units that had a cost of 13. Okay, so that's 65, and that will leave me with 80 units at a cost of 13, which is 1,040. And then the very last thing we have here is a sale of 60. Oops, sorry, wrong spot. Sales go here, 
Um, I only have one group of purchases left. Those are all at 13. So 60 times 13 is 780. That means I will have left in my ending inventory 80 minus the 60, which is 20 at a cost of 13, which is 260. So cost of goods sold. How we calculate cost of goods sold then is to end, add together all of the numbers in this column under cost of goods sold total cost. So what that comes to is 3125. Again, add the 840 plus the 840 plus the 540 plus the 60 plus the 65 plus the 780. Ending inventory, I have $260. That I don't have to calculate. I've already figured that before, which consists of 20 units at $13 cost per piece. So my gross profit, the way that we calculate gross profit is you have to see how many units were sold and what the sales price was for each of those items. So we can see here we sold 130 units and we sold 40 units and we sold 60 units. All those added together means I sold 230 units and the cost or the sales price for each of those was $6,900. So take that 6,900 minus the cost of goods sold of 3125. That means my gross profit is 3575.